Assalamu alaikum and greetings to all listeners of Conversations. Welcome to this special issue of Conversations. It's like a commentary, it's a review. What I'm going to do today is identify five of the best uh, biographies of Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, written by Western scholars. Uh, but before I do that, please uh, subscribe to the channel Conversations. That way you can support it and also ring uh, press the bell icon so that when I post new videos, you get notifications uh, about the new videos. So before I get down to the list, uh, I want to talk about a few honorable mentions. Uh, some of the books uh, that I thought could have made the list but did not make the list. So essentially, this has two parts to this video. The first one are a list of honorable books which could have made the top five and the top five list of books that I want to talk to you about. The first honorable mention is this biography, The Leadership of Prophet Muhammad by John Adair. John Adair is a management and leadership consultant. Uh, he's very, very renowned, very famous, has done, uh, apparently trained more than 100 million people. Uh, and he provides a very short, about 100 pages, but essentially focuses on the leadership qualities of Prophet Muhammad. I find this book very useful. I sometimes use it uh, in my good governance classes for students. Uh, I also wrote a review of this uh, for the Wharton uh, Business School, uh, Knowledge at Wharton. Perhaps you might enjoy it. Uh, I'm going to post the link uh, below in the description of the video. Another book that deserves mention is Professor, Professor Jonathan Brown's Hadith. Uh, Muhammad's legacy in the medieval and modern world. This is not exactly a biography of Prophet Muhammad, but it's one of the best books easily accessible uh, to read and understand about uh, Hadith collection, uh, the complexities of Hadith authentic authentication, uh, and the importance of Hadith uh, for Muslim life, uh, for, for the Sharia, etc. Uh, and even though it's not a biography, and that's why it's not in the top five, uh, it's an excellent book. And I think Everybody who teaches Islam, uh, uh, or at least uh, is interested in learning about Islam and its uh, religious sources, should read uh, this book, uh, Hadith by Jonathan Brown. The third book that uh, made nearly made the list is Muhammad and the Believers at the Origins of Islam by Professor Fred Donner, who is a professor at the University of Chicago. This is a very interesting book, even though one might think that it is a biography of Prophet Muhammad. It is essentially telling the story of the origins of Islam. How did Islam begin? Uh, and uh, But he makes some very interesting observations. Uh, he, he alerted me to the idea that in the beginning, the Prophet's companions always thought of themselves as believers and not Muslims. So they were, so the caliphs were Amirul Mu'minin and not Amirul Muslimin. And how today we think of ourselves as Muslims uh, as distinguished from Hindus, Christians, Jews, and others. Uh, but uh, the early Muslim community always thought of itself as believers. And uh, that frame change in mind allows you to think of other things. This is an excellent book. Uh, I have used it a couple of times in my Intro to Islam classes. And I recommend if you are teaching a class to consider this uh, as an interesting way to talk about the origins of Islam is a little bit more academic and much more serious. This is the Cambridge Companion uh, to Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, edited by Jonathan Brockhoff. Uh, but it has a great set of essays on Prophet Muhammad. Uh, they are written uh, at a much higher level. So if you're going to use it in classrooms, it should be for seniors or even graduate students. I have used it once in a graduate seminar on Islam. Uh, there are two chapters in this that I really liked a lot, and I want to recommend them. One is a chapter by Asma Asaruddin. Uh, it is chapter nine uh, in, the, in the collection. Uh, it's called, Where Earth and Heaven Meet, Remembering Muhammad as Head of State. So for somebody like me who teaches Islam in politics, Islam in good governance, this is an excellent uh, introduction to Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. Asma Afsaruddin also wrote an interesting book uh, called First Muslims. It, it is about the companions of Prophet Muhammad, uh, and uh, it is also like a, an, uh, the origins of Islam 
a book, uh, more of an introduction uh, to the early days of Islam than just a biography of Prophet Muhammad. But she selectively talks about uh, very interesting aspects of Prophet Muhammad's life, including the constitution of Medina. Uh, another chapter in this book that I strongly recommend is uh, by Professor Carl Ernest, it's chapter six, Muhammad as a pole of existence. Uh, this is uh, truly a, a Sufi take on Prophet Muhammad as uh, a source of light and how his light has uh, helped in creating the creation, uh, a very profound Sufi understanding of Prophet Muhammad. He also wrote a book called Muhammad, Rethinking Islam in the Contemporary World. And, and this uh, book is also uh, like, uh, Fred Donner's book, uh, it is more like the origins of Islam and an introduction to Islam than just a biography of Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. These are books that nearly made the list. And one final book that uh, did not make the list of top five books is In the Footsteps of Prophet Muhammad uh, by uh, Lessons from the Life of Muhammad by Tariq Ramadan. Uh, this is an excellent book. Uh, it doesn't so much tell the story, but it dis does follow the life of Prophet Muhammad and in a very beautiful way, succinct way, uh, summarizes the key events of the Prophet's life. It's quite comprehensive, actually, uh, but brief. Uh, so it's a very good book to be used uh, in intro to Islam classes. Uh, and I think all Muslims, uh, especially in the West, uh, for whom English is their main uh, language, should read uh, this book. Unfortunately, Tariq Ramadan has been embroiled in some uh, sexual misconduct uh, allegations and uh, controversies. So his books are now, I don't know, I leave it to you to decide. It's an excellent book by itself. And you decide whether you would like to use it uh, for your classes or not. Uh, regardless of that, uh, I think it should be in your library. Uh, so these are the five books that I think uh, came close to making the list of the best five biographies of Prophet Muhammad uh, written by Western scholars. So before I actually introduce you uh, to the best five books, uh, please like this video, subscribe to this channel. I'm Muqtadar Khan, and now we move to the most important part of this video. I'm excited. So we're now going to talk about the five best biographies of Prophet Muhammad written by Western scholars. Uh, let me make a couple of uh, clarifications before I proceed. Why do they matter? They matter because today Islam is taught in American universities, in European universities. Uh, the growth of Muslim population in the West has uh, created a lot of discussions about Islam and Islamic values, and Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, is one of the two sources uh, of uh, the religion of Islam. We call Usul ad din uh, the Quran, and the precedent of Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. So knowing about him, his life is essential to understanding Islam. Number two, because the university Universities also teach Islam, and in the context of Islamophobia and global geopolitics, it is important that the correct books are used uh, in order to ensure that there is better understanding, better civilizational understanding, better appreciation of the self and the other. So it's very important that uh, we identify some of the good uh, and some of the best biographies of Prophet Muhammad. Uh, I also want to uh, thank uh, two particular sponsors of this conversation, uh, the Islamic Community Center of Lancaster in Pennsylvania and Critical Connections at Think Tank uh, in Massachusetts. Uh, thank you to both of you for sponsoring this uh, uh, video. I'm extremely grateful to all of you and all the supporters of conversations. Uh, I also want people to be alert uh, that some of these authors uh, are not obviously Muslim, and they do not approach the life of Prophet Muhammad as a believer would. Uh, and so, so they, while they may not take uh, the Quran as a divine text or literal word of God, uh, nevertheless, all of them have been extremely respectful of Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, and have done extensive research uh, based on original sources and have told stories uh, and their narratives are fascinating that scholars, students, policymakers, people in the media, as well as 
young Muslims growing up in the West whose main language is English would definitely benefit from all of this. Um, that is very important. So at number five, at number five, it is this Karen Armstrong's Muhammad, a prophet of our time. Karen Armstrong is a really famous scholar and writer of religion. She's written a book on Islam. She's written a book now on, I mean, this is a, a few years old, but this is one of the best biographies. Her writing style is very clear uh, and clearly she knows her sources very well. She also understands the global context uh, under which Islam is scrutinized and therefore her narrative about the life of Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, is cognizant uh, of uh, the global context. And so she highlights aspects of those uh, of the Prophet's life and incidents in his life, which are critical to to everybody today. So I strongly recommend Karen Armstrong at number five. Uh, I have had the opportunity to meet with her. I once had a dinner with her in Georgetown, and uh, I was very impressed with her depth, her wit, her, her understanding of the religion of Islam. And given her religious background, she approaches all religious matters uh, from a very sympathetic perspective. So for those of you who want to use uh, an intro to, in an intro to Islam class, or even in high school, a book on the life of Prophet Muhammad, I strongly recommend Karen Armstrong's Muhammad. If you want to give it to your colleagues, the way you work, your friends, in, in interfaith dialogues, etc. This is a very good book uh, to give. At number four, I have Memories of Muhammad by Professor Umid Safi. Umid Safi teaches at the Duke University, uh, and uh, in this book, he tries to make the case why Prophet Muhammad matters. I like this book a lot because of a couple of aspects in it. Number one, it delves in incredible detail with the episode of Miraj in the life of Prophet Muhammad, his ascension to heaven. And, and he also brings in a wide array of sources. He talks about mystical poetry. He talks about Sufi theories. Uh, he also brings in orthodox sources like the Hadith. Uh, and so this one particular aspect, the ascension of Prophet Muhammad, uh, really, in my opinion, the way he dealt with it is exemplary. He also does something very interesting, which most uh, Sunni biographers uh, do not do. He deals extensively uh, with uh, with the family of Prophet Muhammad, the Ahl al-Bayt, uh, and so his later rendering uh, of life after Prophet Muhammad is also very interesting. He tries his best to be even-handed. He talks about Sunni sources and Shia sources when discussing controversial issues uh, that uh, cropped up after the death of Prophet Muhammad. But nevertheless, it's a beautifully written book which is very sensitive to, you could say it's a loving narrative of Prophet Muhammad, and therefore I like it. I've used it uh, in undergraduate classes, and I strongly recommend that you should have this or at least read it. At number three, I have Professor Juan Coles Muhammad. Professor Juan Cole is a very interesting person, very strongly anti-imperialist, uh, very uh, nuanced uh, at understanding contemporary and historical geopolitics. Um, I've had the pleasure of uh, spending a few days with him in Istanbul, and I was amazed that he could speak Persian, Arabic, Urdu, uh, and Turkish fluently, besides other Western languages. But in this book, the reason why I like it and rank it so high is because I teach international relations uh, and geopolitics. And so what Professor Juan Cole is doing in this is essentially revisionist. He is not only writing a revisionist history of the origin of Islam, the life of Prophet Muhammad, but also a revisionist commentary on the Quran. And he tries to argue that the life of Prophet Muhammad, as well as the messages of the Quran, are not necessarily transcendental, but historical, in the sense that he's responding 
to the circumstances in which he is living. So the Prophet, peace be upon him, is responding to the geopolitical context, the clash of empires, the, the Roman Empire and the Persian Empire, the geopolitics of the various tribes in, in the Arab world. Uh, and so the Prophet is teachings, his understanding of the ethics of warfare, his inclination towards peace, towards peacemaking, towards treaties, towards constitutionalism, all of these are his respondents, responses to the geopolitics of his time and his uh, surroundings. And it is very clear that the Prophet, peace be upon him, is a messenger of peace uh, and is trying to bring peace uh, to his communities and the areas around there. And uh, he also interprets the Quran in, in that way, that some of his revelations are a direct response to that circumstances. Uh, so that's why this book is very interesting uh, for both its methodology and its geopolitics. Uh, I will be using this uh, this semester, oh, sorry, in the spring semester when I teach Islam and global affairs. Uh, so, so to me, this book is very interesting, especially for scholars who are uh, talking about Islam in the context of global politics. In the number second spot uh, is Muhammad, his life based on earlier sources by Martin Links. This is a fabulous piece of work, very classical, published in 1983. Many Muslim countries have given awards to the author. Uh, Martin Links uh, is an expert in linguistics and manuscripts, uh, worked in libraries and museums, uh, and uh, has traveled extensively in the Muslim world. Uh, and so this is a kind of, a, shall we say, a benchmark on how the biography of a great man can be written. So if you are looking for specific events and details from original sources, this is the book to go to. Uh, brother uh, Martin Links was also highly regarded by Muslim community. Uh, he has many followers. Uh, he died in 2003, I think. Uh, but this book has remained a classic and is considered by many, many people as the best the biography of Prophet Muhammad written in English. So that, that is an important thing. This is a must-have book. Now, I have benefited significantly from this book in my research and scholarship and also in my understanding the life of Prophet Muhammad. And now, number one. Let me tell you that this list is obviously not something that is uh, objectively done in terms of uh, doing a survey or something. I reviewed about 50 books. Uh, some of them you can see in this photograph, some in libraries, some on the, uh, on the web. And based on that and my own predilections towards spirituality and mysticism, in my opinion, the best book on the life of Prophet Muhammad is by Professor Anne-Mary Shimel. The book is called And Muhammad is His Messenger. So this is the second part of the Kalima, La ilaha illallah, Muhammad Rasulullah. Uh, there is no God worthy of worship except Allah. And Muhammad is his messenger. So the book itself is titled the veneration of the prophet in Islamic piety. I like this book very much. In fact, Umid Safi's book itself kind of follows the structure of this book. What I like about this book is that uh, it's a no holes bar love of Prophet Muhammad. You can see it coming out on every page and every line. Uh, Professor Anna Mary Schimmel is originally from Germany. She taught at Harvard for 25 years. She's an expert on mysticism, wrote about Rumi, um, very enamored with Iqbal's poetry. Apparently, when she used to teach at Harvard, she would close her eyes while she was lecturing and would recite lengthy mystical poetry in various Muslim languages. Uh, so, so I wish I had an opportunity to, to take one of her classes. Unfortunately, she left the US in the year that I came to the US in 1992. So she talks about the Prophet Muhammad, uh, about his physical appearance, about his spirituality, about his mysticism, how Muslims have revered the Prophet, the poetry that Muslims have written about the Prophet, peace be upon him. And she also details the Prophet's Isra and Miraj, 
the night journey and the ascension. And also interestingly, she concludes with a chapter uh, about Prophet Muhammad in the work of Muhammad Iqbal. But there's also another special thing that she does, which is she had a chapter on the names of Prophet Muhammad. You know, we all talk a lot about Asma al-Husna, the beautiful names of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the, based on the hadith, the 99 names of Allah, we talk a lot about it. But she does this incredible job of listing uh, a lot of names by which Muslims have addressed the Prophet Muhammad and also the names by which God has addressed Prophet Muhammad in the Quran in various ways like Yasin, Taha, etc. So so to me that was really very interesting. But the book is fabulous. Uh, I think everybody who is part of Islamic studies, uh, epistemic community, uh, Muslims uh, definitely who are educated should read this book at least once in their lifetime. This is Fabulous, by far the best biography about Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. So thank you very much for watching. I hope you have already subscribed to the channel, like the video, please share it with your friends and family. And uh, I hope you find, for, for the academics who are watching, I hope you find uh, this list beneficial in some way. Uh, and uh, I want to conclude by reciting the words from the Quran. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Inna Allaha wa malaikatahu yusalluna ala nabi. Ya ayuha al-lazina amanu sallu alayhi wa sallimu taslima. God says in the Quran that God and his angels send blessings on the Prophet. So, O oh, you who believe, send appropriate blessings upon him. And so I think the best way to send salawat and blessings upon Prophet Muhammad is to write a book about his biography, about his life the lessons that we can draw from it. And uh, and that is all. Thank you very much for listening. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.